in ancient times, God spoke to man through prophets and in varied ways. But now, he speaks through Christ, his son, his radiance through eternal days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What I just recited was the first stanza of the office hymn for this past Friday. It is particularly timely since it revisits the central moment of the transfiguration. What is the meaning of this feast and why is it so significant? It occurs twice in the Eucharistic calendar. First, on every last Sunday of the Epiphany, which ushers in Ash Wednesday and Lent, and then every August 6th, which we're anticipating this morning on August 4th. Now, any feast may be considered major if it merits two fixed dates on the liturgical calendar, and here's why. I remarked on my Facebook announcement, both my own personal one and the parish one, I remarked of the homily that, quotes, funny things can happen when you turn a title backwards. It can take on a whole new meaning. And my title as I published it was Only Jesus, colon, Jesus Only. Only Jesus, Jesus Only. And that wasn't just catchy advertising. Well, it was that too. I've got to be honest. It's true. In scripture, only Jesus denotes one thing where Jesus only connotes something else. Let me tell you about why I chose this title. <clears throat> in the winter of 2009, we were still living in Western Michigan. We didn't get here till 2010. I had become very good friends with Bishop Patrick Cooney of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Gaylord, Michigan. Pat always made time to be present and to participate in our annual ecumenical retreat. It was a group called LARC, L-A-R-C, Lutheran, Anglican, Roman Catholic. And that retreat was held at a retreat center, retreat house in his Diocese of Gaylord. And when Roman bishops reach the age of 75, they must resign. I don't know what it is with Episcopal bishops, they have to resign at 72. They probably wear out quicker, right? Well, anyway, when Pat's successor was appointed, Pat invited me to come up and attend his uh, Episcopal ordination, participate in that mass. I was surprised by the Episcopal motto that the new bishop chose, but he elaborated on it during the ordination weekend. He chose only Jesus. And if you followed my um, posts on Facebook, you'll see that I posted his Episcopal coat of arms. Very beautiful. And that is a quotation from the Transfiguration Gospel, Mark 9th chapter, 8th verse. <clears throat> and I quote, and I'm quoting from the New Revised Standard. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. So that's where uh, Bernie got that from. Now the other synoptic accounts read differently. Matthew reads this way, and when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And then Luke says, uh, when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. So all of those accounts have alone. Father Bernie Hebda chose Mark's unique wording of only Jesus rather than the word alone used by Matthew or Luke. Why did he do this? I think he had a good reason and I don't think it was to uh, save ink on his herald heraldic <laughs> motto. The famous gang of three, Peter, James, and John, 
were the apostles that Jesus invited to trek with him up the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, <clears throat> Jesus' own choice uh, of the person to succeed him and to lead the church forward, and the proverbial sons of Zebedee, John, our beloved disciple, and his brother James, this trinity of sorts was asked to make the trek along with Jesus. <clears throat> the human factor, of course, always gets in the way, doesn't it? The three of them needed a nap. But Jesus trudged on. And when they awoke from their snooze, they made out three figures conversing with one another, Moses, Elias, and Jesus. As Peter was wiping his eyelids awake, he blurted out in typical Petrine bluster, let's build three identical tabernacles right here, right now. Meaning, let's erect three equal structures, matching buildings, one for each of you. Let's keep the party going. Let's institutionalize the status quo. Then came the cloud, a huge, thick cloud. It totally obscured the mountaintop as well as the three figures. Then, from heaven, God spoke. And it was no sheer coincidence that these were the very same words God had pronounced at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. This is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. Listen to him. The emphasis, folks, is on the word him. Because when the cloud lifted <clears throat> and the sun had reappeared, only the sun, S-O-N, was to be seen. This is the moment in Mark's gospel where the phrase, only Jesus, occurs. It means that the foundational roles once played by Moses and Elias in the Hebrew Bible had now been accomplished in Jesus. Jesus alone was to usher in the next chapter of salvation history. Peter, <clears throat> as so often, we love Peter, don't we? But so often, he had it wrong. Moses and Elias had finished their conversation with Jesus. Their dialogue had concluded. From then on, Jesus, and only Jesus, would occupy center stage. The trek back down the mountain would not prolong Christ's transfiguration. Rather, that rocky path would prefigure the passion and death, <clears throat> but ultimately the resurrection and ascension of our beloved Lord. By selecting only Jesus as his Episcopal motto, Father Bernie Hebda who, by the way, was a former civil lawyer before he became a priest and who is now the Archbishop of Minneapolis, St. Paul, he was not dismissing the other two central actors on the mountaintop with Jesus. <clears throat> the voluminous Hebrew Bible, which we call the Old Testament, was the very foundation upon which Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, would build the Christian gospel. There were many prophets and sages before Christ, B.C., but Jesus' death and resurrection would usher in a new descriptor, A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. <clears throat> Time itself, as it were, would henceforth measure every moment as if now only Jesus mattered. Well, if only Jesus were visible after Moses and Elias had left the scene, and if the Father, God the Creator, wanted us to hear him only, 
we must pose an important question. And that question is this, does only Jesus also mean only Je Jesus only? I'll repeat that. Does only Jesus also mean Jesus only? Is then Jesus the only means to salvation? You see the thorny question implied here. Frequently, especially in evangelical theology, <clears throat> the following scripture is interpreted as exclusive. And I'm quoting from the 14th chapter of St. John's Gospel and the sixth verse. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, no one sounds pretty exclusive, doesn't it? Except through Jesus. Does one have to be a Christian and a baptized one at that? Is that what it's all about? In my humble opinion, it is not, period. Properly understood, you can come to anything or anyone directly or indirectly. You can do something explicitly or implicitly. In plain language and in my theology, <clears throat> we can all, quotes, come to the Father, meaning go to heaven, enjoy the afterlife, either way. Way one, explicitly and directly as baptized believing Christians, that's us. Number two, second possible way, implicitly and indirectly as good, decent human beings who, whether they have the gift of faith or not, try to live the golden rule and be the best version of themselves they can be. Again, <clears throat> I believe that God is happy with that interpretation. Happy why? Happy to have his creatures come home, whatever route they might take. All roads, you see, don't lead to Rome. They lead to heaven. Transfiguration, wow. What it must have been like to be on that trek with a gang of three plus Jesus. What I would have given to have been up there and have seen the cloud lift, saw everything and everyone else go except for only Jesus. Well, you and I will be treated to a version of that this morning. At the end of our high mass, we will have a mini benediction service. Instead of giving a simple blessing at the end of Mass, as I usually do, I will give a solemn blessing. I will make the sign of the cross over the congregation with the monstrance containing a consecrated host. The transfigured Jesus in the most blessed sacrament of the altar will bless us himself. The worship assistants and I will clear everything else away, everything else and leave the blessed sacrament exposed in the monstrance until about one o'clock this afternoon. Only Jesus, come. Have your own peak experience, your own mountaintop encounter. Just be in the pew. Be there and gaze upon the real presence of your transfigured Lord. And then, as you leave, unite yourself with Jesus, who, after coming back down that mountain, also had to return to the harsh realities of life. If you are able, spend some time adoring our awesome and precious Savior. Amen. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.